Hey guys, guess what? Today is Wednesday, and so I have a walk-in Wednesday for you, but also a quickie. I'm just gonna show you this one gun because it's extremely rare, and it's something way outside my wheelhouse. This is a Smith & Wesson registered Magnum. Now, I had never heard that term before. Um, actually, in my vast collection, my Vost collection, um, I've never owned a Smith & Wesson. We've obviously sold them on our website, but I've never owned a Smith & Wesson, not been something I've really studied. But this came in. The owner who sent us this on consignment uh, mentioned that these can sell for $40,000 or more. So that piqued my interest. I thought, what's so special? So here's what's so special about this. This is the very first 357 Magnum. Not this gun is the very first, but the registered Magnum is uh, Smith & Wesson was the first ones to make a 357. Now, interestingly, it was Douglas Wesson, who is, by the way, the grandson of Daniel Wesson, the founder of the factory. Smith & Wesson kind of made their way in the world when they developed the cartridge and really gave uh, Colt a run for their money um, because it was a huge improvement. So they developed the first cartridge under Daniel Wesson, but then his grandson, Douglas Wesson, uh, really pu pushed for new calibers, new designs. And so he came up with this design, which is the end frame. Later, they did a smaller K frame, but this is an end frame. And again, this is all outside my wheelhouse stuff that I never knew before, but I read up uh, just to talk about this particular gun. Um, and he also pushed for the 357 uh, Magnum. Now, uh, also, um, and actually it's 20 years later, they came up with a 44 Magnum. That was made famous by uh, Dirty Harry. That's a Model 29 44 Magnum, which at that time was the most powerful handgun in the world. But being this is a 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and would blow your head clean off, you've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Okay, a little more history, and then I'm going to show you the gun up close and personal. Um, they made these from 1935 until 1939. Now, that was during the Great Depression. People obviously didn't have money for fancy guns. And in fact, uh, these are all custom made. That's why they're called registered. The certificates they got with the gun, basically saying this is custom made to your design specification, was signed by Douglas Wesson. And you could order it in any barrel length, any half, half inch barrel length. This happens to be five, but you could get it in three, three and a half, four, four and a half on up. Um, I think they go all the way up to seven, seven inch barrel uh, because they did literally custom make them for you. And in spite of the depression uh, and in spite of these being a very expensive, they were highly successful. They made about 5,000 of them, most of them going to police departments such as the first, uh, the first contract uh, went to the Kansas City Police Department and they kind of set the trend for this 357 Magnum going to law enforcement. Um, in fact, this one went to the post office. Let's take a closer look. Okay, this is the gun itself. It's actually a, a stunning finish. This is one gun that I absolutely have to wear gloves. The owner was adamant about um, you know, not putting any marks on it. Uh, you can see the case hardening. Also, I cannot pull the action back because we can't have any roll marks. Uh, there is a very slight roll mark, but obviously we don't want to make that any worse. Um, and, but these, um, I, I read a lot online, and we, we will show somebody uh, sh putting a few rounds, not through this gun, but through a similar gun. For the uninitiated, when you start to shoot a full charge 357 Magnum out of a gun like this, you become increasingly aware of how well armed the old cops who carried these things really were. These guns are fabulous and they're powerful and they're more than capable of taking on just about any bad guy. Um, and the, uh, the trigger pull is very comparable to the Python. In fact, the finish on the Python is the same deep blue. Uh, Python is very famous and I know they, they kill a lot of the walking dead. The Smith & Wesson Magnum is, of course, famous. Um, well, actually, Patton, uh, the gun that he carried, I read two sources that said he carried a registered Magnum with ivory grips, custom made, uh, and another said a Model 27. The Model 27 is, actually comes after the registered Magnum, and that's just because this was so popular that they put it in standard production, which helped drop the price a little bit. They only came in uh, specific size barrels, uh, so you, you no longer had the option to, to build whatever you wanted. 
Uh, these are special because they were custom made to your specifications. Um, so let's take a look. Obviously, it has the Smith & Wesson logo on it. Uh, you can see on the front sight, uh, that is uh, probably brass. Um, it has the U rear sight and case hardening on the, again, I can't pull that back, but there's case hardening here and here. This is in beautiful condition. You see the grips, how beautiful it is. Just a beautiful Smith & Wesson in 357 Magnum. Again, the very first model that shot a 357 Magnum round. Made in the good old USA, of course, and you can see the 357 Magnum written here. Again, very, very little use, and I have to make sure I don't use it at all. Um, I'll show you, there is one way to look inside here. We can open up the cylinder. That doesn't do any damage. But once you open up the cylinder, it locks, and so you can no longer cock it. Um, now, right here, you see that it's registered gun number 2800. Again, 5000 made. This is number 2800, which dates it to August of 37. And we also see that's the post office department. It was shipped to Springfield, Illinois, issued to the post office, most likely postal inspectors. This is number 10 of 15. So the post office ordered 15 of these registered magnums and uh, 10 were delivered. Now, I do have one theory about the fact that it was mostly police departments and federal uh, security agencies that bought the 5,000, not individuals. Roosevelt did the New Deal, which was basically pumping uh, money into the economy and local governments. And I, I believe that probably uh, they were given grants to buy uh, guns such as these, which are a little more expensive than they normally would get, but it would help stimulate the economy. The exact same thing that happened here during COVID, the government was given out checks, and many of you used your stimulus check to buy guns. <laughs> so thank you for that. Uh, it's probably important to mention that this also comes in the original box. Uh, later they had like a gold color box, but this is an early blue box. Again, 1937. Somebody put tape on it here. Um, but still, the box is in great condition. And of course, it will be numbered to the gun. In fact, you can barely see it, but this is registered gun number 2800, and that's a, a separate serial number, which you actually can find on the frame as well. So both of those numbers are also found on the gun. Probably worthwhile to open up, look inside. Beautiful red interior, not faded at all. And then almost as good as having the manual. I don't know that it actually came with a manual, but um, it does have all of this information inside the box. Hey, I love learning something new and I hope you did as well. I had a bunch of our subscribers write to me and say, hey, you haven't done a giveaway in a long time. And you're absolutely right, forgive me. So stay tuned because I'm gonna be doing a giveaway for subscribers. I've got quite a few things that I wanna give away. So we'll give that away to our subscribers. And also one of the questions that I get a lot is, when are you gonna auction off the Ava Braun ring? Uh, that's coming up after Labor Day. Right now we're in the middle of August and a lot of people are away. So I thought I'd wait till after Labor Day and then we will uh, let you know how you could bid on the Ava Braun ring. Hey, thanks for watching. You gotta like and subscribe to this channel because what the heck, you're gonna miss a lot of really cool stuff if you don't.